In today's exploration of cybersecurity tech news, you might recognize this, the logo of Russia's most watched news channel. Whenever we see clips of Russian TV, they pretty much always come from this one channel. And just a few days ago, the company behind this channel, Russia's largest TV network, was hacked. Almost 800 gigabytes of data were stolen and leaked online. This includes 4,000 files and 900,000 emails, some of which go back as far as 20 years. And now it's all downloadable through torrents. I have of course explored this leak so you don't have to, and there is some pretty interesting stuff in here. For example, it seems like this Russian TV network, a $500 million company, is quite fond of using pirated software. So this TV network is called VGTRK, and if you're wondering where that clunky name comes from, the company's official name is actually the All Russia State Television and Radio Broadcasting Company, but in Cyrillic, its initials are pronounced VGTRK. So VGTRK, it's Russia's largest media corporation, and throughout the war in Ukraine, it's been instrumental in broadcasting propaganda to the Russian people. In fact, the Russian government has declared VGTRK essential for the security of the state. And you won't be surprised to hear that this corporation is actually owned by the government. It's almost as if the Kremlin has been trying to make them a target for hacktivists. And just a few days ago, the inevitable happened when hacktivist group NB65, standing for Network Battalion 65, decided to make VGTRK a target. But who even is NB65? So this group only popped up in February of this year, after the invasion of Ukraine had kicked off. But in the short time since then, they've managed to gain hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter, mostly through the drama surrounding them claiming to have hacked Kaspersky and announcing that they were going to leak Kaspersky's actual source code. They generated a whole bunch of hype for this leak, mainly because Kaspersky is a Russian company which makes anti-malware products. And there's a lot of controversy surrounding Kaspersky, as they're alleged to have colluded with Russian intelligence, and there's rumors about their products being used in spying. In fact, the FCC have even declared them a national security threat, and Germany has warned against using their products. So as you can imagine, the prospect of their source code being leaked excited security researchers quite a bit. That is, until NB65 released the source code, and it was found to have nothing to do with sensitive or confidential data or source code, and that in reality, the data released has no value. People figured that NB65 did this purely to gain attention, and no doubt they lost a bunch of reputation. So when they tweeted that they had hacked VGTRK, people were, well, skeptical. But they did deliver, and the 786.2 GB dump is now available through distributed denial of secrets. It's split into two downloads, the leaked emails and the leaked files. Now I focused on trawling through those files, and there's a real mix of things in here. Let's have a look. There's a bunch of promotional material relating to random Russian TV shows. There's also a load of military footage, but it seems to be from 2014 rather than the current conflict. There is some footage of missile tests, but judging from that aspect ratio alone, these don't look all too recent. There's some really random stuff in this leak, like images of a CGI bathroom, from multiple angles, of course. In addition, we've got five minutes of B-roll of a blown over bus shelter, followed by a guy explaining that the bus shelter was probably blown over by the wind, and then we're treated to a close-up of his calculations. Also in my exploration of the files, I came across a bunch of EXCs, suspiciously titled Keygen or Keymaker, and I of course ran them out of curiosity. And yep, yeah, if this leak is to be believed, then it looks like Russia's largest media company relies on using pirated software. I can't say I expected to make that revelation, especially for a company with a revenue in excess of half a billion dollars. But good news for VGTRK, as it looks like software piracy in Russia is actually set to become legalized. The reasoning is that because foreign companies have been refusing to sell software to Russian customers, the Russian government will just allow piracy so people can get their software anyway. Also in the dump, I came across exactly 64 images of some guy posing in front of a green screen. Now, I had no idea who this was until I asked you guys on Instagram. Shoot me a cheeky follow, by the way. It turns out that this is one of Russia's foremost propagandists, one Vladimir Solovyov. He's an anchor on Russia One, the main TV channel run by VGTRK. Now, if this guy is well known in Russia, I can imagine these photos are really very memeable. So if you want them, you can find them within the JPEG folder within the dump. 
Moving on, the dump contains a bunch of documents. I found ratings for all of BGTRK's TV shows going back 20 years, but for the most part, these documents, of which there are quite a lot, make absolutely no sense to me, because, well, I can't read Russian. And I haven't come across any other deep dives into this leak that I can link you. For the most part, unless there's something truly groundbreaking in a data leak, you're probably never going to hear about the contents of the leak in the media. And after this leak went live, NB65 vowed to continue their leaking escapades. And in recent days, they've changed their tactics slightly. They're now holding Russian companies to ransom with, well, ransomware, pledging that any ransom payments will be donated to the humanitarian efforts in Ukraine. And interestingly, researchers discovered that their ransomware uses a leaked Conti source code, Conti being a Russian cybercrime gang which pledged allegiance to Putin about a month ago, before reneging on that pledge of allegiance after they realized that pissing off their Ukrainian members was probably a bad idea, which it was because in retaliation, a Ukrainian insider used an anonymous Twitter account to leak a bunch of top secret Conti files, including the source code that NB65 have gone on to use. Now, in the last few weeks, leak sites have been publishing Russian data dumps almost daily from various hacked companies. So do let me know in the comments if there's any particular leak you want me to have a closer look at. Now, this video was made possible by Linode, who are giving you a $100 60 day credit just for signing up. Linode is essentially your Swiss army knife for cloud computing. If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. One great feature of Linode is their app marketplace, which makes it super easy to spin up servers with pre-configured software. For example, use Linode's Pi-hole app to set up a DNS sinkhole that you can use to block ads across all your devices. And yeah, I do recognize the irony in promoting ad blocking within an actual ad. Linode can run almost anything by providing all the tools a developer really needs at competitive prices. Use the link in the description now to claim your free $100. So thanks for watching and you know what to do, tickle that notification bell and follow me on the Instagrams for behind the scenes content and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.